You know, when it comes to politics, there are a lot of issues that we're all concerned with. But there's one issue underlying all these other issues, and that is the corrupt influence of money on our politics. We have developed in the United States today a legalized system of corruption and bribery. And we'll never be able to deal with climate change adequately. We'll never be able to have universal health care. We'll never be able to deal with the corruption of our food supply, GMOs, income disparity, our high poverty, our high child poverty rate, or our high mass incarceration rate until we deal with this nefarious issue and realize that it's the moral challenge of our generation to get the money out of politics. For we have become a government of a few of the people and by a few of the people and for a few of the people. And if we are going to change the most basic fundamental contract between the American people and its government, then we should be having a passionate debate about that. You know, two major political parties have a chokehold on our system today in a way that is very unhealthy for our democracy. It kind of sucks all the oxygen out of our public discourse. We need to have a conversation today that is a sober, mature, wise, and reflective American conversation. One of the biggest problems we have today is the thought that too many people hold that nothing can change, there's nothing we can do. Where would we be today if the women suffragettes had said nothing will ever change? If the abolitionists had said nothing will ever change? If the civil rights workers that said nothing will ever change, come on, this is America. We change things all the time. The very founding of this country was a major change, and we have some changing to do today, and we can. And the fact that we've been disappointed in the past, well, guess what, that was the past. This is now, and we can have whatever we want. You know, I know some people who say that they're not interested in politics because it's so unconscious. Like, you know, it's too toxic for them. They're on a spiritual path or something. Like, I, I don't understand this because you can't be collectively conscious. You can't be selectively awake. And there is no serious spiritual path that gives any of us a pass on addressing the suffering of other sentient beings. Martin Luther King Jr. said we need a qualitative shift in our souls as well as a quantitative shift in our circumstances. So when it comes to our country, just as with our personal lives, if we want to change things, we can't just change things on the outside. We have to change our thinking. We have to ask ourselves, who am I? What are the principles on which I stand and do I stand on them? And where do I have my own character defects? Where do I need to atone? Where do I need to make amends? When we do this work as individuals, miraculous breakthroughs occur. When we do this work as a nation, those breakthroughs will occur as well. And it's time to do that.